Welcome Battletech enthusiasts. Now the question is, what is a Lagrangian? So I'm going to speed this up a bit, um, or by a factor of two. But basically, I'm now going to show you what a Lagrangian formalism is. Um, T is the kinetic, V is the potential, V would be gravitational potential. I'm going to solve a very simple introductory problem, which is just a mass sliding on a frictionless inclined plane under gravity, G. So I'm going to define X as the position along the x-axis, and z as the height above the ground. And I'm also defining x prime as a position along the inclined plane. x dot is a uh, old-school Newtonian notation, because after all, physicists and not mathematicians invented calculus, although mathematicians would disagree. Um, x dot is derivative with respect to time, and x double dot is second derivative, so velocity and acceleration. So really it's this, the physicist notation is on the left and the mathematician notation on the right, the ddt is the mathematician notation. Um, so now, to go from x to x prime, it's just times cosine theta, and x prime of t is just x of t over cosine theta. And z of t is just x prime of t of sine of theta. So all you have to do is find x prime of t, and then you've kind of figured it out. Now, the potential is just the potential from gravity. And kinetic is just kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. And since all the velocity is along this inclined plane, because it's sliding there, I can just do it as in terms of x prime dot. So here's the Lagrangian. Now, um, I'll write it up up here just to remind us that it's t minus v. That's the definition. It's by definition. Now there's these equations of motion come out of the Lagrangian through something called the Lagrangian formalism. And uh, I haven't shown you that yet, but uh, I've shown you the prep work. There's also something called the Hamiltonian, which is the potential plus kinetic instead of the difference between the two. And there's a, something called the Hamiltonian formalism that goes along with that, but we won't use that. We're going to use the Lagrangian formalism here. So now I'm going to write it out more explicitly. And now, what is the actual Lagrangian formalism itself? It's this strange-looking set of formulas. And I mistakenly wrote equal, but it's really, it's actually colon. So Q sub I colon, not equal, as I wrote it there. Uh, this expression that I'm writing down. And that's equal to zero. So all you have to do is, now Q sub I is actually your coordinate system. And if you're using Cartesian coordinates, then this would be x, y, and z. If you were using spherical coordinates, then it'd be r, theta, and phi. But I'm using rectangular coordinates since it's easiest to solve this with rectangular coordinates on an inclined plane. So q sub 1 is with respect to x. q sub 2 would be with respect to z. So I'm going to write those out here as an example. But it turns out you don't actually have to solve the system of two equations and two unknowns. You can solve just one only. These are differential equations. Um, the reason you only have to solve one is because x is linked to z by just the trigonometry and theta. They're not independent and they're not able to drift around. It's not like freely moving in a plane here. So now I'm going to just write down. So I only have to solve one of these equations because it's a degenerate problem. So I'm here, I'm working way out a little bit. And you'll notice the m's cancel out and the 2 and the 1 half cancel out, because, which is good because acceleration should not be a function of the mass on a frictionless plane anyway. So here I'm going to just write down the constraints. And 
and then I'm going to just remind that's where the tangent theta came from. And I'm just checking because I haven't done this kind of hand calculation work in a long time, so I'm kind of slow at it and inefficient, so I'm just checking myself here. And then this is a little bit off screen, so I'll have to roll the paper a little bit. So as you can see, I'm now getting this, and x dot is just d dt of x dot is acceleration, since x dot is velocity. So we just derived d dt of x dot equals g tan theta cosine theta, which is g sine theta. And that's actually just x double dot, which is acceleration. Although I think I actually should have been x prime double dot. I must have made a mistake somewhere there. But anyway, that's it which means the acceleration along an inclined plane is just gravity altered by the angle. You saw how much work that was to do that simple calculation. If you were to actually try to do this with a solar system of some kind, um, you would end up with a thick stack of papers as thick as a book full of equations, and you would spend months on trying to figure out a solution or possibly even just get stuck. So normally this is done with computers and not by hand, but I've shown you the tools to actually do it by hand if you had the inclination and the time. And once you have the Lagrangian equations of motion, you can find that there's these special stable points called the Lagrange points that move around with objects. Like here, for example, you have the Earth going around the sun. And there's these special Lagrange points that are stable. That is, if you put an object in those points, and you started off initially with the, uh, the correct velocity to keep moving like it is in this pattern, you'll find that it stays at that point and it is gravitationally stable. Here's an example of the WMAP satellite with respect to Earth as it was launched, and you can see that it's kind of creating a Lysidus pattern, but it stays fixed to the Earth at like a fixed location. And you can see that it's act these are the actual data from the actual WMAP position. And it's only moving at around like 100 miles an hour. And what that means is, in Battletech anyway, if you had station keeping thrusters, you wouldn't actually need to even use them. You would just kind of, if you jump to a Lagrange point, you could just sit there and you wouldn't need to use any fuel, you would just stay. Now, if you were to instead jump to a zenith or nadir position in, of the solar system, then you would need to, in order to stay at that point, even though you would not have any radial forces on you to like, if you were thinking cylindrical coordinates, you would not have any forces hitting you to change your position in the r direction or in the theta direction, but you would have forces pulling you inward along the z-axis towards the sun. So you would need station-keeping thrusters to keep you at the zenith or nadir position. But if you go to one of the Lagrange points, you don't even need station-keeping thrusters. You just kind of drift around there. In fact, that path that I show you with the WMAP satellite is the exact path that a dropship would take from a jump ship at a pirate point to go to the Earth or whatever planet you were taking. And um, if you wanted to, again, go from the planet to the Lagrange point, all you would need to do is take that path. That would be the minimum fuel path to go from the Earth to the Lagrange point. Once you're at the Lagrange point, um, you would have roughly a only a 100 mile an hour differential speed with the uh, dropship. So you could just use your simple, easy thrusters and minimal thrusters to dock. Um, but uh, it, in order to get there, you would still have to first, of course. Now, if you were going from the dropship to the planet, you would first have to escape from the Lagrange point, which does not require that much fuel, but you need to kick your main engines enough to get you on that one arc that goes towards the Earth. Then once you reach the Earth, you will either need to use arrow braking to stop yourself and make you land, or you could do bursts of engine thrust to make you from a hyperbolic, locally hyperbolic escape velocity path to a elliptical orbit. 
and then you can use small every time you're at the at the apogee or the perigee of the of the elliptical orbit you could kick yourself with a small amount of fuel to go into a tighter and tighter elliptical orbit um, and then once you're uh, close enough to the earth and slow enough then you could do your main burn and then just enter the atmosphere so actually if you look at the w map arcs you can see the lysojuice figure of once you have been inside the lagrange point and how this ties to lagrangians is that the equations of motion are generated by a region the lagrangian point let's say the lagrange point is a minimum in the total energy so once you get into that region you will tend to stay there and if you t start wandering away from that region there'll be a restorative force that's gravitational that'll tend to push you back in there so for small perturbations like planets and moons and things trying to kick you out of orbit the uh, lagrange point will self-restore you into a stable position so the neat part about it is that it has nothing to do with the KF drive and jump drive and wormholes and things like that, but instead just basic mechanics. Um, it requires very little effort to stay in a Lagrange point once you put yourself there, and it's relatively easy to go to the planet of choice or back and forth uh, from a Lagrange point because your station or your jump ship can just kind of sit there using no fuel and you your drop ship can traverse back and forth. That's it. And the next section I'm going to actually discuss a little bit about, about GR and wormholes and things like that. And then also later on in another talk I'll discuss lasers and solid state lasers. And here's some good books on those topics. All right. Thank you. Bye.